Hitting tennis balls against a wall can be a priceless training aid that can help you develop rhythm, timing, footwork, control, and just a ton of other things. But unfortunately, most tennis players look like this when they hit against a wall. Notice how I'm hitting at different speeds and with different shots and I'm pulling myself forward, backwards, right and left and it's just kind of a mess. And I don't have any time in between shots. I'm rushed, I'm hurried and the whole thing is, is just, there's not a whole lot of benefit here. So here's what you can do instead. Here's me in that same space and I want you to watch the, the tempo that I start to hit with in this rally right here. This is gonna look completely different. Instead of trying to look impressive by hitting the ball hard, and I, I know it's satisfying when you hit the ball hard and you get a really fast tempo going back and forth, and I, I, I totally get it. But when you have a little bit of space like this, and you can use a, a parking lot, I've seen, I've seen people use uh, parking garages, uh, basements, if you have a big uh, basement with brick or cinder block walls, just enough space to let the ball bounce twice. In my opinion, that's really the, the key here, is the second bounce. The second bounce gives you the time to be able to collect yourself, to be able to move to a correct position, and to go to a, a coil position and, and prepare for the next shot. And so you'll notice that when I hit the ball a little bit higher, a little bit harder, I'm moving back. And when I hit the ball a little bit lower or a little bit softer, I'm having a transition forwards. And my intention here for every single shot is to let the ball bounce twice. And so I'm not just smacking the ball and hitting it wherever and however, but instead I'm maintaining a tempo. I'm maintaining a rhythm. And this is basically mimicking short courts. This is the, the same thing that your coach tries to get you to do when you're rallying with uh, a partner or with him or her service line to service line back and forth is find this rhythm and this tempo and it's very hard to do it's very difficult to do keys here for sure are to leave your hand nice and loose and relaxed around the grip and also look to anticipate where the ball is going when i hit the ball a little bit low and a little bit short you'll see me kind of reading it ahead of time and I, i'm not just standing there staring at the ball but it's just like when i'm playing a match or reading my shot from a hitting partner I'm trying to read it early and make adjustments so that I can be in the right position early ahead of time before the ball bounces for that second time and I'm getting ready to hit the next ball. So that was topspin forehands and this is a routine I've been going through for a little while. Next up, I'm gonna do slice backhands. So you'll see me come out, feed, position myself for backhand right away. And just like the forehand, I'm trying to find a rhythm and a flow to these shots so that I have good timing and I'm giving myself enough time to get ready for each individual shot. And this takes a lot of control and a lot of feel. And I found myself on these backhand rallies hitting a little bit too low. And it took me a little bit to find the right angle with the racket face to open the racket up enough to let the ball bounce high enough. And so on average, and this would be fantastic by the way, if you have the ability to put some tape on the wall. I would guess the three foot line, which is the, the middle, the height of the middle of the net, is probably somewhere around here or so. So I'm, I'm trying to put the ball like a foot or two over the top of the net. And if you have the ability to get some, some tape and either draw the net line or you could draw a, uh, a box that, that you could aim for that would be over the top of that three foot line, that would really be ideal training or practice, but that's basically what I'm visualizing here as I'm hitting these shots. And anything lower than that, I'll have to scramble forwards for, and I, I can't maintain my distance from the wall, and I can't maintain the rhythm anymore. And so the goal here is to control the height, control the speed, even though we're hitting with a different spin now and with a different shot, still maintaining that good rhythm and that, that good tempo. And now we have the topspin backhand. I, I've always struggled hitting topspin backhand in short court. And it was because my fundamentals were always really poor and really weak. And so I was kind of arming it. And so this is a great opportunity for me to work on still coiling, even though I'm not far away from my target, I'm trying to maintain a slow, calm speed. So this would be an example of 
me not coiling and I'm, I'm just using my arm here. And so even what's tricky about short court and why so many players struggle with it is they see the short target and they assume that they need to mirror it with short choppy you know, strokes. But when you watch professional players warm up short court or college athletes or you know, 5-0 players, great, great players, they'll hit short court and they use their full range of motion just very slowly. And beginner players struggle with controlling the speed while maintaining full length. And that's why this can be a really valuable tool, you know, training aid, is because it forces you to maintain speed control, but also try to be disciplined about the length of your swing. And so my coil, you know, position on my backhand has been something I've been working on. This is a, a, better, a better job here with my chest going a little bit past my hips. And I think there's a couple better examples, but not only, uh, I know it seems counterintuitive at first, but not only does it not hurt necessarily to go to a full turn or coil position, but it helps. And the reason why, let me, let me find one where I, I do a, a really good job of uh, coiling. When the chest turns well past the hips, which is what people generally are talking about when they, when they use the word coil, we have some separation between the upper body and the lower body. What happens is it enables you to be able to drop the hand and the arm and the racket super passively and super calm and relaxed because the arm doesn't have to hit the ball anymore. When you don't coil and you just kind of turn your body to the side, the arm has to do the hitting. And so it's super hard to be smooth and fluid and calm and soft when you don't hit that coil. So it might seem like the coil is, is overkill, but it actually counterintuitively, it enables you to be calm and smooth and relaxed and, and slow in a warm up drill like this. So when you focus on making a good strong movement with the big parts of your body, it can actually help you relax and it can help you go slower. Even though it feels like at first, like, oh, this is totally overkill. Practice going slow and smooth while using the big parts of your body really effectively and correctly. So you can do this again on any wall. Yeah, you can even use like a, a foam tennis ball if you're worried about it bouncing too much or the noise that it's making or you know whatever. It's an excellent drill. I've started doing this before all of my practice sessions where I'm training with a ball machine. And it's just a great way when I don't have a partner there to rally with slowly to get myself into that nice, calm, smooth groove and even work on technical things like my, my coil on my back end. Hopefully this gives you some ideas. Thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful, please do me a favor and click the like button. Every time you click a, a like button on this channel, we send a penny more to the Milwaukee Tennis Education Foundation. So thank you for supporting them and for supporting us. We'll catch you in the next video.